All right, everyone, welcome back. Ready for another deep dive. Always ready to explore the fascinating world of, uh, well, AI security, I guess you could call it. And today we've got a real doozy. We're cracking open the OWASP Top 10 for LLM Applications 2025. Oh yeah, this is the uh, this is the latest and greatest edition. And it's got some real surprises, let me tell you. Yeah, definitely reflects how these large language models are really uh, really infiltrating every corner of our lives. It's kind of amazing, right? Like just a few years ago, this was all like science fiction stuff. Totally. But now. We're talking about AI that can write code, compose music, even, you know, hold conversations that are practically indistinguishable from a human. Yeah. And that's I mean, that's incredible. But uh, but it also opens up a whole new can of worms when it comes to security. Oh, yeah. That's why we're here. We're diving headfirst into those worms. Well, I wouldn't say headfirst, maybe more like cautiously dipping our toes. Right. Cautiously dipping our toes into the can of worms. So what's the what's the biggest takeaway from this new Woe Wasp list? Anything that really jumped out at you? Well, one thing that really struck me was uh, was the emphasis on on prompt injection. Prompt injection. Okay. So for our listeners who maybe aren't familiar with that term, can you break that down a little bit? Sure. So basically, prompt injection is a way for attackers to uh, to manipulate the input that's given to an LLM. The input, meaning like the prompts or the questions that we're asking the AI. Exactly. And and by carefully crafting these prompts, they can essentially trick the AI into doing things that it wasn't designed to do. Okay, so like what kind of things? Give me a real world example. All right, so imagine you've got a um, a customer support chat bot that's powered by an LLM. Right, like those things that pop up on websites and try to answer your questions. Exactly. Now, a hacker could come along and uh, and instead of asking a legitimate question, they could slip in a command that tells the AI to, say, dump its entire database of customer information. Wait, so just by typing in a sneaky question, they could steal all that data? Potentially, yeah. And it's not just about stealing data. They could also use prompt injection to send spam emails, spread misinformation, or even take control of other systems that are connected to the LLM. Whoa, okay. That is, uh, that's definitely not good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty serious vulnerability. And it sounds like something that a lot of people might not even be aware of. Right, because on the surface, these LLMs can seem so, so harmless. You know, like they're just they're just chatting away, answering your questions. But beneath that friendly facade, there's this whole like underbelly of potential security risks. Precisely. OK, so prompt injection. That's definitely something to watch out for. What else is on the OWASP hit list? Well, another big one is sensitive information disclosure. Sensitive information disclosure. OK, so is that basically like uh, like data breaches and leaks? It's it's related, but it's a little bit different. In this case, we're not talking about, um, you know, someone hacking into a database and stealing information. We're talking about the LLMs themselves accidentally revealing sensitive information. Accidentally? Wait, how does an AI accidentally leak data? Well, it all comes down to, uh, to the way these models are trained. Yeah. They're trained on these massive data sets, and sometimes those data sets contain sensitive information that uh, that wasn't meant to be public. So it's like the AI is remembering something it wasn't supposed to. Yeah, kind of. And then when someone asks the right question or or gives the right prompt, the AI might inadvertently spit out that sensitive information. So it's not necessarily a malicious attack. It's more like a like a slip of the tongue. Exactly. But the consequences can be just as serious. Yeah, I can imagine. So I guess the takeaway here is that even if you trust the people who built the AI, you can't necessarily trust the data that it's been trained on. That's a that's a good point. All right, so we've got prompt injection, we've got sensitive information disclosure. What else are we dealing with here? Well, another big concern is supply chain risks. Supply chain. Now that sounds like something from the uh, from the real world, like manufacturing and logistics. Yeah, it is, but it applies to AI development as well. Okay, how so? Well, when you're building an LLM application, you're often relying on a whole chain of different components. Okay. You've got pre-trained models, you've got data sets, you've got third-party libraries, and any one of those components could be compromised. So it's like, a, it's like a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Exactly. And if one of those links is weak, it can introduce vulnerabilities into the entire application. Can you give me an example of how this might play out in the real world? Sure. So let's say you're using a, um, a popular open source LLM to build a chatbot. Okay. Now, what if that open source model has been tampered with? What if someone has injected malicious code into it? Ooh, so the chatbot could be like 
secretly spreading malware or something. Potentially, yeah. Or it could be subtly biased in a certain way. So you might not even realize that something's wrong until it's too late. That's the, that's the scary part about supply chain attacks. All right, so we've got prompt injection, sensitive information disclosure, and supply chain risks. It's starting to feel like a like a techno thriller novel over here. Yeah, it can get pretty intense. But we're not done yet, are we? What's next on the list? All right, let's talk about data and model poisoning. Data and model poisoning. That sounds uh that sounds ominous. It is, and it's a very real threat. So, what exactly are we talking about here? So, imagine a hacker who wants to um to manipulate an AI's behavior. Okay. Now, instead of attacking the AI directly, they could target the data that the AI is trained on. Ah, so they're poisoning the well, so to speak. Exactly. And they can do this in a few different ways. They could introduce subtle biases into the data. So the AI starts making biased decisions without even realizing it. Right. Or they could create backdoors, which are basically hidden triggers that allow the attacker to control the AI's behavior under specific circumstances. So it's like a, like a sleeper agent that's been programmed to activate at a certain time. Yeah, that's a good analogy. And these backdoors can be very difficult to detect because they only trigger under very specific conditions. So it's not like the AI is malfunctioning all the time. It's just that uh, under certain circumstances, it suddenly starts behaving in a way that it shouldn't. Exactly. All right. That is uh, that is pretty scary stuff. It is. And it highlights the fact that, you know, AI security is not just about protecting the AI itself. It's also about protecting the data that it's trained on. And the entire ecosystem that it interacts with. Right. Okay. So we've covered four vulnerabilities so far. What's up next on our deep dive? Well, next up, we've got improper output handling. This one's a little more... Uh, a little more technical. All right. We'll lead the way. I'm all ears. <laughs> okay. So improper output handling is all about what happens after the AI has done its thing. You know. After it's generated some texture code or whatever it's been asked to do. Exactly. And the problem is that uh, that output might not always be safe to use directly. Okay. So it's like baking a cake. You can have the best ingredients and in the best recipe, but if you don't handle the cake properly after it comes out of the oven, it's going to be a disaster. That's a great analogy. I try. So give me a real-world example of how this might play out with an LLM. All right, let's say you've got an LLM that's generating SQL queries for a database. Okay. Now, if those queries aren't properly sanitized before they're executed... Sanitized meaning like uh, like checking for any malicious code or anything like that. Exactly. If they're not properly sanitized, then an attacker could potentially sneak in some malicious code that could, you know delete data, steal data, or even take control of the entire database. Yikes, that's not good. No, it's not. And this can happen even if the LLM itself is secure. It's like uh, it's like handing a loaded gun to someone who doesn't know how to use it safely. Exactly. So the takeaway here is that we need to treat all LLM outputs as potentially untrusted. Okay, so we need to uh, we need to be very careful about how we handle that output and make sure that it's safe before we use it. All right, so improper output handling, that's another one to add to the list. What's next? All right, now let's talk about something called excessive agency. Excessive agency, okay. That sounds like something straight out of a uh, out of a sci-fi movie. It does, doesn't it? But it's a very real concern when we're talking about AI. So what exactly does it mean? Well, it refers to the level of autonomy that we give to these systems. Yeah. You know, how much freedom they have to make decisions and take actions on their own. Right. And the problem is that if we give them too much agency, they could potentially do things that we don't want them to do. So like a like a rogue AI taking over the world kind of thing. Well, maybe not that extreme, but it could be something like, uh, you know, an AI assistant that has access to your bank account. Okay. And if that assistant is vulnerable to, say, prompt injection, it could potentially make unauthorized transactions. So I guess the takeaway here is that we need to be very careful about how much power we give to these systems. Right. We need to set clear boundaries and controls. Make sure they stay in their lane, so to speak. Exactly. All right. Excessive agency. That's another one to watch out for. What else have we got? Okay. Let's talk about system prompt leakage. System prompt leakage. Okay. Is that like uh, like leaking the AI's secret thoughts or something? It's more about leaking the blueprint of how the AI thinks. Okay. I'm intrigued. Tell me more. So remember those system prompts that we were talking about earlier? Yep. The ones that guide the AI's behavior? Yeah. 
Well, if those prompts are leaked, it could give attackers valuable information about how the AI works. So they could figure out how to manipulate it or exploit its weaknesses. Exactly. And it's not just about malicious attackers. System prompt leakage could also reveal sensitive information about the application itself, you know? Like its limitations or its potential vulnerabilities. Right. It's like leaving the instruction manual for your security system out in the open. Not a good idea. No, not at all. All right, so system prompt leakage, that's another one to be aware of. What's next? All right, let's dive into something called vector and embedding weaknesses. Vector and embedding weaknesses. Okay. That sounds uh, that sounds pretty technical. It is a bit technical, but it's an important one to understand because it affects a growing trend in LLM applications, which is retrieval augmented generation. Retrieval augmented generation or uh or RAG for short, I guess. Exactly, RAG. Okay, so what is RAG? So basically, RAG allows LLMs to connect to external knowledge sources. Like databases or the internet or something like that. Exactly. And this allows them to provide more comprehensive and up-to-date responses. So it's like giving the AI a massive library to reference. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. But where does the weakness come in? Well, the weakness lies in the way that this information is represented and retrieved. Okay. You see, RAG relies on something called vector embeddings, which are basically mathematical representations of words and concepts. Right. And these embeddings can be vulnerable to attack. So an attacker could manipulate those embeddings to, like, trick the AI into giving wrong answers or something. Potentially, yeah. Or they could use them to uh, to extract sensitive information from the AI's knowledge base. Okay, so it's like a it's like a backdoor into the AI's brain. In a way, yeah. All right, vector and embedding weaknesses. That's another one to keep an eye on. We're really getting into the weeds here. We are, but it's important to understand these technical details because they have real world implications. Absolutely. So what's next on our deep dive? Yeah. What other depths of the AI security ocean are we exploring? Well, let's talk about something that's increasingly relevant in today's world, misinformation. Specifically, how LLMs can become powerful tools for spreading falsehoods and manipulating public opinion. Ah, yes. The age-old problem of fake news amplified by the power of AI. This should be interesting. Yeah, it's, you know, it's kind of crazy to think that these AI models can create content that's practically indistinguishable from something a human would write. It's like, is anything real anymore? Well, that's the that's the big question, isn't it? And it's mm -hmm. it's one of the reasons why misinformation is such a huge concern with LLMs. Yeah, because if you can't tell the difference between real news and fake news, how do you even know what to believe anymore? Right. It really undermines trust in, in everything. And it's not just about, like, you know, spreading rumors or sharing fake news articles. Yeah. These LLMs can create entire narratives, generate deep fakes, even impersonate real people online. Oh, yeah. It's way beyond just like your your typical Internet troll spreading spreading nonsense. This is next level stuff. Yeah, this is like a this is like weaponized misinformation, basically. So what can we do about it? I mean, is it even possible to fight back against this kind of AI powered propaganda? Well, it's definitely a challenge, but it's not impossible. I think uh, I think one of the most important things is education. Education, okay. Mm -hmm. Like educating mm -hmm. people about how these LLMs work and how they can be used to spread misinformation. Exactly, because once you understand how something works, you're less likely to be fooled by it. Makes sense. So it's about like developing a kind of like AI literacy, right? <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. We need to we need to teach people how to be critical thinkers in the age of AI. So we can spot those fake news articles and deep fakes and all that. Right. And it's not just about spotting the fakes. It's also about being more discerning about the information that we consume in general. Like, don't just believe everything you read online. Exactly. Question your sources, verify information from multiple perspectives, and be wary of content that seems designed to elicit strong emotional responses. It's like we need to develop a whole new set of digital literacy skills to navigate this this AI-powered information landscape. I think you're absolutely right. Well, on that note, let's move on to the final vulnerability on our list. Unbounded consumption. Ah, yes. Unbounded consumption. This one's a bit different from the others. How so? Well, it's not so much about malicious intent, you know, like someone trying to hack into a system or steal data. Right. It's more about the potential for LLMs to consume vast amounts of computing power, which can lead to uh, to some unintended consequences. Unintended consequences? Like what? Give me the worst case scenario. All right. So imagine an attacker who wants to uh, to take down an LLM powered system. OK. Now, instead of trying to hack into the system directly, they could simply flood it with requests. 
like just bombard it with questions and prompts. Exactly. And this would force the LLM to work overtime, consuming more and more computing power. And eventually it would just crash, right? Potentially, yeah. Or it could become so slow and unresponsive that it's basically unusable. So it's like a like a denial of service attack, but instead of targeting a, a website or a server, they're targeting the AI itself. That's a good way to think about it. And it's not just about malicious attacks either, right? Right. Even legitimate usage can lead to problems if it's not properly managed. Because these LLMs are so computationally intensive. Exactly. They require a ton of processing power, which can translate into, you know, hefty cloud computing bills. So it's not just about protecting the data or the model itself. It's also about protecting the infrastructure that supports it. Yeah, that's a really important point. And it's something that a lot of people don't think about. All right, so unbounded consumption, that's definitely something to be aware of. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground today. We've explored 10 vulnerabilities from prompt injection to unbounded consumption. And it's clear that AI security is a, uh, it's a complex and evolving landscape. It really is. But what's encouraging is that there are, you know, there are solutions and strategies for mitigating these risks. Right, like the OWASP top 10 that we've been discussing. Exactly. That's a, that's a valuable resource for anyone who's working with or using LLM applications. So what's the, what's the key takeaway for our listeners? Should they be running for the hills and swearing off AI forever? Oh, absolutely not. I think AI is, you know, it's a powerful tool with the potential to, to transform our lives for the better. But like any powerful tool, it needs to be used responsibly. Exactly. We need to be aware of the risks and we need to take steps to mitigate those risks. It's like, uh, it's like fire, right? Sure. Fire can be used to cook our food and keep us warm. But it can also burn down our houses if we're not careful. That's a perfect analogy. So, you know, embrace the power of AI, but also recognize its potential dangers. Well said. Well, on that note, I want to thank you for joining us on this deep dive. It's been uh, it's been a real eye opener. It has. It's been great chatting with you about all of this. And to our listeners, as always, stay curious, stay informed, and stay secure. Until next time. <laughs>